Welcome to Synchronicity. This is now the third time I've tried to record this episode, and I think I have a handle on it now. I wrote down so much shit over the past week that it is overwhelming, I guess. I mean, I probably have like three episodes worth of shit in here, maybe four. I'm going to get through as much of this stuff as I possibly can. Uh, Holy shit, Noah, what are you doing? I also realize it's felt like probably I've been gone for two months if you're just a regular subscriber to the podcast. Um, You know, it's just once a week. It's a regular output for people who do podcasts. There is stuff on the Patreon. We have a bonus episode with Ramin Nazer coming out in a couple of days. I'll be releasing guest episodes and solo casts from there, uh, you know, at least a couple of times a week. And we do the live streams and the live readings. The next live reading is April 20th, 420 uh, at 4.20 p.m. Because, you know, I like the weed. Also, big shout out to Natalie and Lauren for coming through on the delivery of the weed. I love it. And if people care about what I'm talking about, go back a couple episodes. Send me shit. I love it. Also, Massachusetts, boo to you for closing down recreational sales of weed as a non-essential service. Meanwhile, liquor stores, essential service, of course. Weird. Just pointing that out. Just pointing that out. Not judging. Not condemning. We have a lot of stuff to cover in this episode. Um, Some of it is organized. Some of it is not organized. So if I say, oh, give me a second while I go through my notes to get there, deal with it. Uh, Also, I want to just acknowledge some of the criticism and really overwhelmingly positive messages I got about mentioning Trump in the past couple of episodes. So here's the deal. Um, I would say I'm a Trump fan for many of the way he, many of the ways he engages um, just the external world. I think his confidence in himself is admirable. Um, I'm not like a Trump zealot. I don't think everything he does is right all of the time, but I think he's useful as a tool for allowing people to see where they're at and where they're getting stuck. And I think for that alone, um, that's a cool thing to do. If you can recognize that everyone is playing a role, right? Everyone is playing a role in your life and everyone else's life. Then you can start to have some compassion and appreciation for someone who would come in and take on a lot of flack, maybe because they're doing objectively bad things. But that's that's a decision on kind of a cosmic level. If you can appreciate it, um, you can open up and start to have compassion for the devils and the demons too. And I'm not calling Trump a devil or a demon, even if you think he is. I'm just saying the devils and demons in your life also are worthy of love and compassion and not in like, oh, I gotta do it like this because it's important to love people. No, because like when you understand that that's true alchemy and that it actually allows you to be the person you've always wanted to be, uh, then getting it. All right, here's where we're going to start. Everyone that bothers, I'm just jumping the fuck in. We have so much stuff to cover. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Okay, everything that bothers you is you showing you something about yourself through another. Don't condemn them to your perception of them, it's not, oh, wait, 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 hold on, I wrote this weird. Don't get, here, let me just unpack this. Okay, everyone that bothers you is you showing something you, you, oh, fucking Christ, no, this episode is going to be fucking flail city, by the way. I'm definitely all over the place, definitely have written way too much shit down, too much on my mind in terms of wanting to get this stuff out, so <laughs> welcome to it. Everyone that bothers you is you showing you something about yourself through another. Don't condemn condemn them to your perception of them if it's not loving as you ultimately condemn yourself. So here's what I'm saying here. Uh, if you judge someone else because of something they're doing that you think is wrong or you see that object, you know, let's say they punch an old lady in the face. We'll use the classic example. And you go, holy fuck, that's a shitty person over there. Um You're binding that person to your impression of them, potentially, if your imagination is strong, and you're also condemning them to be that person, which is condemning yourself to an action. Does that mean you're going to go punch an old lady in the face? No, that would be insane. Then it would just be, (laughs) I think everything would just devolve to people hitting themselves in the nuts if that's just everyone had to play out. something they condemned. But what it does mean is there is an aspect of yourself where you do something wrong that you then judge yourself for that and condemn yourself to that judgment. So what is the proper action to say to take if you see someone doing something horrible? It's to recognize that as a role that they are playing. They have either chosen it for themselves or accepted it from someone else who has that subjective opinion of them. Does this mean we allow and permit 
fucked up actions in society and our lives. No, but it means we change it with our imaginations. We can see them as a better version of themselves. This is something that comes up in a relationships a lot. And I'm sure a lot of you are dealing with all aspects of relationship as you're trapped inside or trapped pretty close together to people you've chosen or found yourself with. Um, if you hold someone you're in a relationship with to the worst version of themselves, to who they are in your mind, you're an asshole. I'm sorry. Just, I don't mean to say that like you're forever an asshole. It just means you're kind of being an asshole and you have the choice to not be an asshole. So what you want to do is let's say your partner or someone you care about does something that upsets you. You got to rise above that and recognize, you know what, that's not really who they are. Now, if they demonstrate a pattern of constantly doing these things and not, you know, uh, adhering to the best version of who they are in your mind, well, maybe that's trying to show you something else. Um, but either way, it's going to push you along the path. Let's talk about two ways of looking at this, twin flame or soulmate. So twin flames, right? These are relationships, either intimate or not, that where people work through their issues, their kind of personal things that they've wanted to work through as a soul, as a in, you know, non-incarnate being, just like a deep energetic thing they want to work through twin flames work through it by slamming into each other just by like full frontal crashing in like airy season ramming into each other it's airy season now so a lot of people are doing that that's how problems come to the surface or issues that are worked through it's not abundantly pleasant over time it can work it can be intense it can be passionate it can be amazing but over time those relationships tend to not work because it's that's who wants to be slamming against someone well, it depends on the type of slamming but who wants to really be like bumping energies Jeez, that also sounds kind of cool who wants to be <laughs> i'm just making <laughs> let me try to find a more accurate description of what's going on who wants to be constantly fighting with another person that type of energy to figure out things in life forever some people but not everyone. Trump maybe is one of those people who really works through shit by fighting. Who knows? But anyway, um, I don't want to bring up Trump anymore. I know people flip out. Thank you for all the nice comments for people like, I see what you're saying. And for the people who got bent out of shape, he's trying to show you something. That's all. It's okay. Don't worry. It's all good. Um, so let's, let's, let's though compare that to kind of like a soulmate relationship, which I wouldn't have believed in until recently. But let's, let's compare it to that. This is a harmonious, smooth version of working through your issues and working through energetic things, both positive and negative, right? Let's say you're dealing with jealousy issues, right? Something like that. You're going to be able to work through that with someone who supports you and doesn't hold you to a version of yourself where you're like kind of this weird, jealous, like, fuck, right? That's important. If you can rise above any situation and see the best in anyone, not because you're delusional, not because you know they're, you, you just only want to look at the silver lining of everything, but because you recognize this is an operative power of your consciousness. And just doing this is just better and it's more loving. Then you're going to find relationships, situations, energetic circumstances that are more uh, congruent and harmonious with who you are. That's a nice way of saying it. So again, the ultimate goal here is to not condemn people to your perception of them because condemning them would be not a good thing too. You can imagine and have a perception of them that's amazing and feel free to bind them to that. That's really nice. And it also doesn't mean you're puppet stringing them. This is something I've been trying to figure out for a long time. If you imagine someone fulfilled, happy, um, and loved uh, and loving, you're not puppet stringing anything. That's ultimately what everyone wants, for real. Now, the ways in which that comes about, that's up to the people. It can be a rocky ride or it can be a smooth fucking sweet-ass sailing voyage. Either way, you can have your own odyssey. That's cool. You can have your own Moana adventure, but you can also decide when you want it to be the good parts of that, right? Okay, and I know that sounds weird for people. All right, let's talk a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump cut to something I didn't write down, but we'll just talk about real life right now for people listening in the future you know in, in uh, uh the spring and summer and early parts of the winter of 2020 there was a pandemic for the coronavirus covid19 and people were freaking the fuck out people i got a comment uh, from someone this past week that they didn't think i was taking the virus seriously enough i'm not taking it seriously enough how dare me for not taking the virus serious i should be serious now we're going to talk about a few things related to corona, and I don't have these written down, so bear with me. Number one, 
It's important to recognize that we embrace the light and the dark in any situation. The light of this is that many of us are learning how to make ourselves immune from a virus, immune from certain types of illnesses, how to be immune from fear and worry and anxiety. And this is a very powerful lesson. Now, that doesn't mean there aren't people actually dying in the world. They're physically dying. They're sometimes dying in horrible, painful ways, not being allowed to see their families, not being able to breathe. These are quite literally a lot of people's worst nightmares. I am fully aware of that. That's part of the reason I engage with the news and pay attention to what's going on. I'm not burying my head in the sand like a, what is it, a camel? The camp, no, camels don't do that. Ostriches? Ostriches do that. Okay, I'm not doing that. I'm fully aware of that. So I'm aware of both the light and the dark. Okay, you need to embrace both of them as well. However, you get to choose what you want to focus on and how you want to perceive it. Now, let's talk about what, let's talk about like people's biggest fears from this virus. Getting it, getting sick, and dying. Or someone you love, getting it, getting sick, and dying. That's pretty right. Are we agreed that this is pretty much everyone's biggest fear right now related to the virus? Maybe some people are worried about the economic aspects as well. We'll get to that. If you are worried about getting it, getting sick and dying, then you have not investigated what death means. You have not spent the proper amount of time, and hopefully this is the only lesson you need to learn, is that you go and you look at this authentically. What is physical death? Is it the end of everything? Is it just blackness? Do you forget who you are and everyone you've ever loved and you go into nothing and it's this existential fucking nightmare? And boo hoo hoo. Is it that? Is it that? If that's what it is, be terrified. Be scared. Be eternally fucking freaked out and everything. However, that's really not what's going on. I can't say this enough. You're here to face what appears to be eternal death and conquer it. So that's pretty fucking cool, okay? It appears to be eternal death. It appears to be the ending. It appears to be this person is gone. You are gone. That for sure, that's exactly what it appears to be. When you recognize what is actually going on and you are familiar with psychically killing versions of yourself, you will understand there is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear, not only because is it unlikely that you are going to get this virus, get sick, and then die, that you you don't even have to play that fucking game. And I promise you, within three to four months, something like that, probably before, shit will go back as close to normal as it can be. Things will never be normal again. This is going to be on people's minds for an extended period of time, even when it's not an acute threat, even maybe when there's a vaccine or something to deal with this particular one. This is going to be on people's minds. It's going to change their consciousness. It's going to change where people's pr- people prioritize what they do in their lives, who they spend time with, what they're doing. This is all wonderful, great stuff if you use it as the opportunity as it that it is. But if you're focusing only on the dark shit, only on the death and destruction, your existential dread... I'm so, I feel for you, I am imagining you getting what the fuck this is actually about. And I want to talk about something that's going to be a little controversial, controversial, controversial here. Um, <clears throat> and I already know it. I do believe that your state of consciousness makes you immune to physical illness. I do believe that by tuning yourself up to a cer- certain frequency, occupying that frequency and emanating from that frequency, not only can you make yourself immune to certain states of consciousness, which then can turn into physical emanations, Um, you can help others do that as well. You basically strike your own bell, you make this beautiful sound, you walk around other people, you energetically send it to other people, and they start to vibrate at that frequency too. And that's what's going on. And it's okay if you're freaked out and you're like, oh no, I'm not not emanating. It's cool, you can. And we'll talk about ways to deal with this. Um, Maybe the group imagining for this week. How about we do this? Is it time we do a group imagining? I've kind of fallen off the horse with that one. Um, Group imagining for this week. Imagine yourself and everyone you know and everyone you care about and love being Looking back in a few months' time or a couple, just don't even bind it to time. Just looking back and being like, wow, that, that virus really was pretty crazy, but look at all the amazing things it brought us. Wow. And that can be anything. That can be how beautiful nature is, how much you appreciate the people in your lives, how much you appreciate the food you have, how much you appreciate going out to dinner at a nice restaurant or just a cool place, going to a concert. 
you can imagine yourself appreciating with those you love uh, in the future. Do that. That's an imaginal technique worth doing. Um, imagining yourself understanding and processing the lessons that this is trying to teach you individually and the collective, that's something worth imagining. If you're an energetic protect protector, that's what you should be doing. If you're feeling good, if you're one of the people asking yourself who may be fully accepting that, Am I allowed to feel this good during a global pandemic? Am I allowed to feel this good in the face of fucking death and destruction? Am I allowed to feel this good in the charnel grounds, right? The fucking bur burial cemetery skeleton grounds. Am I allowed to feel this good? You're probably an energetic protector. And something worth imagining is all of the great shit that is going to come out of this for culture, for humanity, for yourself. First and foremost, that's okay. That's not selfish. Imagine great things for yourself. That's totally okay. A great thing for yourself, by the way, can be the health and happiness of people you love. That's totally cool. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more about Con condemnation whatever you condemn you're oppressing and it will ultimately be expressed through you so don't condemn shit don't condemn people to being shitheads you can recognize someone being a shithead okay that's fine no big deal it's not who they are i have a higher vision of who they are moving on don't oppress stuff you're oppressing yourself at the end of the day okay truth and faith over fear and doubt all right, let's say it again. Truth and faith over fear and doubt. Truth is easy to recognize. You feel it. It feels fucking amazing. You're like, oh, that shit's true. Maybe you don't even want it to be true, but you're like, that shit's true. Faith, what's faith again? It's just loyalty to the unseen world. What do I mean by unseen? Not with your senses, what you experience in this reality, base level reality, whatever you want to call this plane of existence, which is getting way cooler. We're upticking the vibrations to different levels. It's happening, but it's also base level. We don't have tons of control here. When you have a vision in your mind that is ultimately expressed in a beautiful, harmonious way, uh, trust that. That's faith. That's it. Fear and doubt. What are those? Fear is, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Everyone around me is dying. I'm so scared. I'm scared. <laughs> that shit. And doubt is the thing where it goes like, I don't know. I don't think so. That's not how it works. I don't know. Is that right? I don't think so. Skepticism in the classical sense doesn't mean skeptical like, I don't believe anything. It means, oh shit. Oh my God. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just taking a break here. I, the other night... Had a little journey um, on some fun stuff and uh, saw these patterns whenever I closed my eyes. And I'm just now realizing where I'm recording this. It's the pattern of the carpet that I'm looking at. Fuck, that's so weird. Holy shit, man. Oh, is there a cross on it? Oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, doubt fuck it dump it you don't need it fear fucking dump it you don't need it move the fuck on find truth and faith they're fucking great it's also a lot better this is actually how shit works so you might as well just accept it and then start building your future with your visions also go back with revision it has the word in it re re vision vision revise revise and revision those are the tools that you can use to change things that maybe haven't conformed to the way you wanted them to be in the past is it cheating is it lying no it's fucking awesome have you realized who the potter is yet? Do you know the potter? Have you ever familiar with the potter who makes the pots? Uh, they make the cool fucking clay pots and the things and the stuff. If they're working on something, this is from Neville Goddard, if they're working on something and you're like, whoa, look at that cool fucking bowl. Look how fucking cool that thing is. And then they fuck it up because they put their finger, you know, it's got it fucked up. Do they cry? And then they go, oh, my, my pot is broken. No, they fucking reshape the clay. It's no big deal. They just reshape it. Maybe the next thing they make is even better. You're the potter. Your imagination is the potter. You craft and mold what you want to create in this world. That's it. You're the potter. I am, right? I am. You say that. I am. That is the potter. Okay? It's pretty fucking cool. Trust yourself and your visions become realities. You need to trust yourself throughout this process, okay? Okay. As you do that, you'll begin to have more confidence and belief that you're a good person, which you are. You're fucking awesome, which you are. You do shit that's cool because you do. And then you're just, when you have a vision or you have an idea and it feels right, you go, oh, that's going to happen. Fucking amazing. And you don't have to fucking doubt it, right? It's no big deal. Okay. You give up your eternal power to rediscover it, which is a fun game. If you think about it, it's like the coolest game of hide and seek ever. It's like, oh my God, I'm God. I'm everything. I'm fucking literally everything. 
I forgot it. Oh, I'm nothing. I'm just a little person. I don't know how to do anything. Oh, I'm just a human. Just a small little piece of dust in a great big old planet. <laughs> okay, cool. If that's what you want to play and you want to live from that space because it makes you feel better, cool. I don't know how many people that makes feel better at the end of the day, feeling like a little insignificant speck of dust. Sounds kind of shitty, but it's a game of hide and seek. You you know the story of Hanuman? Hanuman was the monkey god who basically was fucking so badass, so fucking cool that he started fucking with the sun. He was like, he was like fucking around with it, like moving it, changing it. And the sun was like, what the fuck, Hanuman? You're a piece of shit, man. Like, what the fuck you doing? You can't be out here wilding like this, you monkey. And so he made him a regular old monkey and forgot that he had any type of powers whatsoever until one day when he was supposed to help Ram, who was another incarnation of God, um, basically rediscover who Prince Rama, who he was, he remembered that he could jump over vast distances, make himself any size he wanted. And just all these cool fucking shit because of course he was everything. He's Hanuman, a fucking deity. So anyway, we're all Hanuman. We're all Jesus. We're all Buddha. We're all Krishna. We're all this stuff. It's fucking cool. So anyway, it's a fun game that we're doing because you do rediscover it. I promise you that. It's a guarantee. Uh, the one you're looking for is you. Make sure you understand that. If you think you need anything else in life to be complete, um, wrong. You just need to rediscover who you are. So you're constantly looking for yourself. Does that mean you won't find reflections of yourself through other people who are amazing and make you feel great? Yeah. No, you will. It's great. Uh, the great remembering. We'll use that in terms of, let's, let's use that instead of the great awakening. Right, the great awakening certainly uh, is something, but the great remembering—we're just remembering what's going on here. This is April Fool's Day, right? I'm releasing this on April Fool's. It's April Fool's. This day now means something very different for me. I actually just got a new place uh, in Rhinecliff, signed a lease, move in today. Um, April Fool's Day is the new beginning. That's what the Fool card is in the tarot. It represents new beginnings. We take this plunge off the cliff of our awareness into the unknown. What's down there is up to you. You know what I found down the rabbit hole? is fucking amazing adventures, unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, acceptance, laughter, all the good shit, music. There's a ton of music down there. Jump in. So this is April Fool's Fool's Day, this is the great remembering. This is a turning point in a lot of people's lives. Just remember this day, okay? Hermit up, man. If you are someone who doesn't mind being alone and is alone right now, fucking enjoy it. If you're someone who doesn't mind being alone and now you find yourself craving social connection, either through social media or looking forward to being with real people, great, enjoy that, okay? Have you embraced your psychic death yet? Have you? Have you? Have you done it? You should. This just means killing off a version of yourself that is no longer serving you. It does not mean physical death. That does nothing. Physical suicide, by the way, does nothing at all. You just loop it back. Nietzsche had this idea that we're in this recurring loop, this eternal loop, and it's this hellish experience because we can never get out. What he failed to realize, he did identify that it is a recurring loop, but we have the opportunity to get out of it whenever we want. The way we get out of it is by recognizing who we are, how consciousness works. I've spoken about this at length. You prove it to yourself through direct experience. Don't take my word for it ever. Prove it to yourself. You are God. You are everything. Your imagination creates your reality. Everyone's world is their world. It's their version of their world for real. How does that make sense? If you think about it, if you feel it, it makes complete sense. If you try to intellectually or conceptually hack away at it, it makes no sense. It's impossible. All the factors and complexities of this world, how could everyone be running their own version of their world? They are collaboration and peace of mind are coming your way i promise you if you're listening to this it's almost a guarantee just accept it imagine the wish fulfilled okay your primal state is fulfillment so just imagine whatever you want to experience whoever you want to be assume yourself to be that person and then you are that's it take a nap just take a nap doing that that's it that's all you need to do your primal state is fulfillment that is where you came from. You descended to this plane of existence, existence from a primal state of fulfillment. Your process as you ascend back to that place is to recognize how you are eternally fulfilled. And when you recognize it, you realize it. And what I mean by realize is not remembering, is it is realized, they're made real into this reality, right? That's what's going on here. It's pretty fucking amazing. The subjective appropriation of the objective hope is the way to success. Do you understand? 
The subjective appropriation of the objective hope is the way to success. So that means when you subjectively feel from within your own being how you would like to feel had that thing happen or had you received what you wanted or had you felt the way you wanted to feel, that's it. That's the whole fucking game. You don't have to run through these programs and fight reality to get where you want. You don't. Trust me. I have seen enough proof of this. Your mood determines your fortune more than your fortune determines your mood. Facts. How many rich people have you heard about or known who are not happy? How many people who don't have many resources are happy and then, and then the resources find them whenever they need them, whatever they've set up. Now, people who want to have abundance and abundance can be defined as many different things in many people's lives it doesn't just mean material abundance it could be emotional well-being physical well-being people who have that um inside internally it's typically expressed externally as well and by typically i mean always so your mood determines your fortune more than your fortune determines your mood okay suspend your thoughts and reason just for a second and imagine what the feeling would be like if you're already the person you'd like to be just for a second if you're a thinky thinky type of person i get this can be difficult if you're thinking oh i gotta think about this i gotta think about this don't do that just suspend your thoughts and reason just for a second and imagine what the feeling would be like if you were already the person you'd like to be just do that. Try that once in a while. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. Everything outside of you actually exists inside your imagination, so that's fun. There's no world out there. It doesn't even exist. Yeah, you can tap on things. You can do things. You can call people. You can talk to people. It doesn't exist. It's inside your fucking head. Okay. Prove it to yourself by bending reality both with revision, by going back and creating the scenarios and changing them, and in the future by feeling from within your own perspective, from within your own eyes, seeing, believing, sensory input, but feeling what you would like to feel and prove it to yourself. Don't take my fucking word for it. It doesn't make any sense to take my word for it. That's insane. I know I'm super convincing because I believe this. So you can latch onto that frequency, but you do it yourself. You prove it to yourself. Nothing exists out there. We're not even moving. We're like meditating somewhere up in space. It's like a cosmic being. We're not even moving. Prayer. Let's talk about prayer. I hear more people actually getting into prayer right now. People who used to make fun of people for praying. They're starting to pray. Prayer just equals the subjective appropriation of the objective state. It's the same thing I was talking about before. It's just imagining something, feeling it. Do it as you go to sleep. Do it as you're taking a nap, right? Just these, you feel it, you feel it, the objective. That's it. That's prayer. That's it. Don't pray to, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, I love you. Make this magical thing happen for me. If you know that God is your sense of I am, your imagination, do that all you want. But if you are praying to an external deity, you're fucking up, brah. They don't exist. Now you can get results from that. Your belief in an external deity creates that deity in your life, but eventually you're going to have to come to terms with what's going on. As Job did in the Bible, God, why hast thou forsaken me? You're doing it to yourself. Just change it. Flip it. You get everything you wanted. You don't have to destroy your whole family. Fucking Jesus Christ, man. All right. Feel the end. That's it. Just the end of what you want. Feel that. Let the script play out that gets you there. Okay? That's it. You got, I'm just moving through this shit as fast as possible. I don't think we're halfway done. All right. <clears throat> you got to admit this movie is pretty fucking riveting, right? It's just admit it. Just for a second, step out of whatever you're in. Look at what's going on. This is a pretty fucking good movie. Yeah, we're at the point in the movie where it looks like an Independence Day. The aliens are going to take over and Will Smith has to go do that. And Randy Quaid has to fly into the fucking thing and blow it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, it feels like that. But guess what? We're good. We're going to come out of this. Yes, 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 yes. Probably millions of people will die from coronavirus. Not this year, maybe a few hundred thousand, uh, you know, in the United States. I would try downplaying a few hundred thousand. That's real. I don't want to just be like, hey, that's nothing. Yes, we're going to have to have some human sacrifices happen, not because we choose, not like people want to believe Trump is doing these just out there death sentencing people. Choices have to be made cosmically. Souls have made those choices as individuals first. No one is dying who didn't determine that they wanted to die in this. That's very important to understand. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be trying to help. It doesn't mean we shouldn't be helping with drives for our, uh, personal protective equipment and all of these wonderful things. That is certainly something we should be working on, especially if you feel called to work on it. Don't negate that. But there's other shit going on too. And the movie of what's going on is pretty fucking riveting. It's pretty fucking engaging. Uh, it's, it's, ah, I mean, come on. You got to admit that. Now, some of us, it's our job 
to feel good during this. That's it. That's your whole fucking job is just to feel good and beam that out. Don't do that carelessly. Don't do that recklessly. Don't do that specifically at the expense of other people. That's just being a dick. But you might just, it might just be your job to feel good and beam that out. Okay, so don't feel bad about that. Anyway, this movie is riveting. That's all I'm saying. Um, Also, a lot of people (laughs) are getting what they wanted. A lot of people were writing to me be like, hey, I just wish I had a stable income. I'm out of work. You know, I'd like some more money to make moves. A lot of those people are getting that money now. So there's positives and there's negatives to all of this. There are people who are losing their jobs. Maybe you weren't meant to have those jobs. I guarantee if you lost it, you weren't. Maybe you're being asked to look at relationships and things that weren't working out for you and decide whether you want to move out of those into something better. Anyway, April Fool's Day, Uh, shit is getting super fucking weird, and I fucking love it. This is my comfort zone uncertainty. Uh, I I know how to navigate this shit. I feel really good doing it, too. I've been doing this, so it feels really good. Um, Let's talk about a few things that are good. Radishes are good. Eat more radishes. They're fucking amazing. Uh, The Caribou, the new Caribou album, that's really good. Um, uh, album by Rhythm and Sound, by Rhythm and Sound, that's really good. Uh, send me weed. I guess I wrote this down somewhere. Um, thank, did I thank Natalie and Lauren already? Send me stuff. They just shut down fucking stuff in Massachusetts. Come on, guys. Hit, hit, help a brother out. Relax and listen to more Curtis Mayfield. Tripping Out is a great one. Higher, high, just, just, just listen. Just listen to Curtis Mayfield and thank me later. Um, Have you realized that being comfortable in rapidly changing environments is a superpower yet? Because it is. It is. It most certainly fucking is. It's like the best thing. Being comfortable and being able to navigate confidently uh, and coolly in rapidly changing environments and situations and circumstances is a motherfucking superpower. That's a state of consciousness worth wedding yourself to. Wed yourself to that, right? We'll talk a little bit about that in, in a little bit. But just recognize, have you realized that yet? Being comfortable in rapidly changing environments is a super bow Your opinion of another is a confession about yourself. This is why we look at polarizing figures and say, thank God you exist for showing me where I am in myself. If someone who does something wrong, my immediate reaction is say they are a horrible person. Fuck that. I hope they die. Oh, my God. There's a part of you where you feel that about yourself. That's no good. So this is just recognize your opinion of another is a confession about yourself. You can totally be aware of people doing things that don't seem good and maybe aren't good. Just know that your opinion of them is a confession about yourself. Okay. A rising tide lifts all boats. Do you understand? The tide is rising. It's rising, it's rising, it's rising. If you have a house that's right by the beach, and if it gets too high, your house is gone. That's okay, jump on a boat. A rising tide lifts all boats. We're building some boats here, okay? We're building some fun boats. It's pretty cool. Sail the ocean blue. It's fun. Moana Adventures, okay? You change the dream as you imagine the wish fulfilled. This world is a dream. It is no more concrete than any place you go while you're sleeping at night. It's a fucking dream. Okay, it is as you change the dream, you are imagining what you would like to see in it. So as you imagine the wish fulfilled, you change this dream. Try it out. Use any of the techniques I've given out. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll do one at the end uh, of this episode. Okay. Uh, did I talk about the triangles yet? I don't know. Life is good. That's it. Life is good. It's really good. Recognize that. Have you realized fearlessness yet? Have you realized what that means? That doesn't mean you never fear, you never feel fear, but have you realized fearlessness? It's something you can tap into at any time. A good time to tap into it is when you feel fear and you want the proper lesson and the juice that's maybe there, but don't want to be fearful, right? Because it's hard to make good decisions when we're fearful. Our flight or fight response triggers emotionally, psychologically, spiritually even. Um, so when you realize fearlessness, when you bring it into your life, you can transpose it to the areas that are most useful, okay? This is the best fucking timeline, and don't you forget it. Don't let anyone tell you it's not. Don't let anyone fucking tell you it's not. I don't care if there's infinite death and destruction. This is the best fucking timeline. Latch on to that, understand that, ride this fucking wave, okay? 
Have you realized you're a rascal yet? If you're listening to this podcast, if you're riding this wave, you're a rascal. It means you're meant to do whatever the fuck you want to do. It means you recognize the inherent darkness and light embedded in every situation and you choose to still have a good time with it. That's a fucking rascal. Those are the people I hang out with. Those are the people I identify with. Those are the people who filtered into my life. They're all rascals. And it's fucking badass being a rascal. Okay. Carl Jung was a rascal. Alan Watts was a rascal. Uh, Sri Anandi Maya Ma was a rascal, all rascals. Maharaji, named Karoli Baba, all rascals. All my coolest friends, this is an observation, all my coolest friends are quarantined with lots of musical instruments. I don't know what happened, myself included, <laughs> including myself as the coolest friend. We all got stuck with our creative tools physically around it, like musical instruments, guitars, piano, drums, basses, uh, software for making music, all this stuff. Like, I don't know what happened, but I see it on Instagram. I see on the, where people are. It's something happened. They're all fucking quarantined with lots of musical instruments. What do you think that means? I'm making a music, me France. Okay. Weed is essential. This goes back. This is now the third time. I guess I was really on my mind the past two weeks. Fucking weed, man. Fucking weed. It's the coolest. Don't let it, uh, listen, don't let anyone tell you it's not, all right? Many people have many relationships with weed and not all of them are productive, but it's up to the individual. I love it and it's the coolest and I will continue to love it because it is the coolest and I consider it essential. So people should be making sure that people can get weed. This is, if this isn't a proof of it, I don't know. I got weed. Thank you to my listeners. You're the best. If you want to send me weed, Noah at syncpodcast.com. It's fun. We love it. Have you realized your love for this world is endless yet? It is. It's totally endless. Like you, you don't have an end to how much stuff you can love. How cool is that's fucking cool. You don't have an end. You love everything so much. There's no end to it. That's fucking cool. It's your world too, right? God, that's fucking cool. And that's true for everyone. Just to be clear, today is a good day. You can make tomorrow a good day, but today is a good day. And that's true of every day facts even if shit happens that doesn't feel good in the moment it's a great day it's a good day you'll always see that remaining joyful in the charnel grounds is an ability that's always with you what are the charnel grounds in agories which is a tantric path um the charnel grounds right are these cemeteries where there were the skulls and bones and all the people don't like to go there it's not fun to hang out in the cemetery i was actually walking through a cemetery with my son eli the other day just because there's one by our house and as we walked through it, I was like, wow, this is really cool. It was a cool old cemetery. It was like people born in like the 1700s and 1800s. I was like, wow, this is really cool. This is a great time. And my son was loving it too. And I was like, I wonder how many people like just hate this shit who would never want to go to a cemetery. But when you hang out there, especially at night, I'm not saying you go hang out at actual cemeteries at night. You can. But the charnel grounds, like it's a place where people don't want to be because there's a lot of death, a lot of destruction. It can be a lot of sadness and heaviness you can hang out there and still remain joyful, God bless you. God bless you for being alive right now when so many people are in the charnel grounds, are in these hellish existences, are dealing with death and destruction and sickness and poverty. If you can remain joyful, not because you're a crazy person, not because you're a lunatic, but because you understand what the fuck is actually going on, God bless you. And you're the best, right? Bless yourself on that. Just remain joyful. You can do that. Don't feel bad about it, okay? You build the inner heart before you build the outer shell. Your persona is the outer shell. This world is the outer shell. Build your inner heart. Understand what that means. If you hate Donald Trump, if you, I'm going to keep bringing this fucker up. If you hate Hitler, if you hate all these people, mm, tune up that inner heart. Tune up that inner heart. Try to find the perspective of the role that they're playing that allows you to feel what you need to feel towards them, to tune yourself up before you build your outer shell. Trust me, this life will work so much smoother, so much better for you. It's pretty great. If you're a gardener, this is a real life 3D thing. Yay, it's almost time to start gardening again. How fun is that? It's super cool. Gardening, planting those seeds, seeing them grow, watching them flower. Oh, what a true expression of what we're doing here. Amazing time. We're in the chrysalis right now. We're coming out. We're going to be beautiful butterflies. Some of us are doing this every day. Butterflies, butterflies, fireflies, cool. Thoth, Toth, however you say it, right? We hear this a lot in the Emerald Tablet. Toth, Thoth equals Enoch equals Hermes. This is the great communicator, the great revealer, the great persuader. We get math, music, uh, all of language, uh, geometry, all of these wonderful things that show us kind of the function of what we're doing here, this ascension process, this whole kind of platonic, solid, beautiful, little, little big fucking world we've created. Um, they're all the same people. So if you're into 
any of this stuff. I'm really getting into numerology, uh, gematria. Some of these things have just been flowing into my life. Some from people asking me questions. I'm like, I should learn about that. And as I do, I recognize all the same shit. Find these connections. Find the languages that you need to learn. I'm learning a new language, an actual one. Um, Just do what you got to do to reveal the wisdom to yourself. Um, A lot of these things will be amazing and wonderful as you experience them and encounter them. Just don't get overwhelmed by the amazement. Just be like, wow, cool synchronicity, bruh. Have you realized this life you've created is the most beautiful creation of all time? This one. This one that you did this time, this is the most beautiful one. How fucking, this is it. You created the most beautiful one this time. You fucking did it. That's really fucking cool. Like understand that from a deep, deep, deep fundamental level and watch it be expressed in your life. Uh, I watched a YouTube thing the other night, um, Secrets of the Solar Lords. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link on Twitter to it or in, not on Instagram. You can't do links there. I'll put a link on Twitter. It's called Secrets of the Solar Lords. Um, it's fucking good. The guy kind of has a doofy voice. It's kind of like an overly spiritual, but the information in it is fucking good. It's really good. Um, so go check that out. Perhaps it's your job. If people, a lot of people, I put it on my Instagram story the other day. A lot of people were asking. I replied to most of you, um, but if you didn't, that's what it was. Secrets of the Solar Lords or Secret of the Solar Lords. Um, Perhaps it's your job to feel good. Let's touch on that before, right? Perhaps it's just your job to feel good. No big deal. That might be the whole thing. Have you realized your compassion for the darkness yet, right? If you carry the light, you seek the dark. Have you realized your compassion for the darkness? Have you realized that this virus is a beautiful thing without negating its horrible destruction and Kali energy? Have you realized that Donald Trump is a benevolent being who has quite literally taken on the role of a douchebag to allow people to wake up to their true nature? Have you realized that yet? Because when you have compassion for elements that are dark, you're fucking riding away. Also, it doesn't seem as important or ominous. This is really important to recognize, with especially with conspiracy theories or people, you know, nefarious plots or just objectively wrong things, right? If you recognize that it's not that big of a deal, it's just part of the story, it's not that important. You can actually deal with it pretty fucking well. Which brings me to one of the bigger points of this episode. What will you wed yourself to? What state of consciousness do you want to be married to? For real. Is it one of joy, ecstasy, fulfillment, curiosity, growth? Or is it one of fear, doubt, anxiety, depression, worry? right? These are choices. If it doesn't feel like a choice, detangle your mind, revise past situation and situations and old narratives that bind you to things. If you feel that you have, you know, trauma runs your life or you have certain conceptions of yourself that rule you, um, by all means, run out that pattern if it feels comfortable, but also recognize you can flip the fucking switch at any point, determine how you would like to feel, determine the state of consciousness you would like to marry and marry it. And eternally marry it. Don't do not do it for a little bit of time. Eternally marry this state of consciousness. It is exactly what you want. And it's totally okay to do that. Just be aware that you can do this whenever you want, right? You can get divorced from a state of consciousness, especially if it's an unproductive one. If it's one that's not making you feel fulfilled and happy and joyful and allowing you to be on the track of what you're supposed to be doing, get a divorce. You're allowed to do that too. Now, be careful that you don't judge the state of consciousness as you're doing this. There's a function of fear, worry, doubt. They they have functions, but recognize what their purest states are, like anger. Anger is actually just a kind of corrupted or dirty version of clarity. Anger can totally be like, I see something so clearly. It's fucked up that this isn't how it is. Um, The people who are, you know, helping create this thing that's bad, they're fucked up, right? That's, you may be seeing something very clear there, but if you're coloring it with your anger and rage, uh, you're probably not going to be able to get out of it and see the clearest path towards getting out of it. So there is certainly value to be found in fear at times but recognize the value move to it and through it and boom boom bye bye so just be very careful about what state of consciousness what mood you're wedding yourself what mood are you marrying okay i'm really proud of you for riding this wave this is a big fucker (laughs) these are these big kahunas i was talking about it's not the biggest but it's definitely it's big um so i'm really proud of you for riding it if you need to hear that just know you're fucking cool you're fully capable of determining your relationship to fear. You are. You totally get to determine it. You get to figure that out. If it feels like fear rules you, 
know that that's not true and you're like, no, that is true, then just imagine, imagine, actually feel the feeling of not having fear rule your life. What does that feel like? It feels like confidence. It feels like security. It feels like safety. It feels like excitement. Sometimes fear is just a reaction to energy. Just can be a big energy coming in your life and you're like, oh no, what? What am I going to do? I'm afraid. But it's just big energy. You can feel it. It's exciting. Okay. You're fully capable of determining that relationship. Okay. Angels, guides, and spirits are always speaking to and through you, but it's up to you whether you listen to them or not. Also, spoiler alert, you're the angels, aliens, guides, and spirits, right? That's the truth. Like what we perceive as different, even if they are angels or different beings, right? Different beings in air quotes. It's you. You're everything. You have chosen a very precious life as a human being to recognize this in a physical body. Do you know how fucking crazy cool that is? It's really cool. So anything that's speaking to and through you is you. Understand this. You can still create whatever narratives you want, uh, whatever and believe them fully, right? We have history. There's plenty of reasons to believe in other people, right? Both as avatars of what we'd like to be or what we see in the world or what's possible. Totally, but they're you. When you understand that you get to choose and write your own narrative, pick up the pen and determine what you want, okay? Have you realized you're constantly in a state of grace yet? You are. You're always doing the right fucking thing. You're so, you're a smooth ass motherfucker is what you are. That's what you are. You're just a smooth ass motherfucker. Have you realized that's what grace is? It's just love in action. It's unconditional love in action and it's expressed beautifully and you're always in it. If you want to be, just wake up to it, right? Ace of Cups. Should we do this reading? Nah, well, wait a second. Looks like enough of us clicked our ruby slippers together and said where we want to go. Just remember that. There's no place like home. Where is home? It's in your heart. It's unconditional love. We're there. We got there. It looks kind of fucked up because we haven't been here in a while. We're like, whoa, there's people dying around us. Shit looks really crazy. What's going on? But we're there. Tune yourself to that frequency. Occupy that frequency. Don't get preachy about it. Don't fucking go yell this shit from the rooftops to every single person you know. I don't talk about, I don't talk this way to people in my regular life. I mean, fuck, it's annoying. But just tune yourself up to this frequency and you're good to go. All right. We're here. We got it. There's no place like home. All right. Melody in motion, harmony in expression. If you carry the melody of who you want to be, you will inevitably harmonize with everything around you. And it's beautiful. Right. We'll do some more music analogies in coming episodes. A lot of music flowing into this dimension. Also, side note, patrons, they know music's coming out. Been putting full songs out on Patreon. Get ready for more of those. Uh, They'll hit the streaming services probably later this year. Let's maybe wait until uh, people can actually listen to music outside of their homes, then I'll put some out um, for everyone else. The path of the fool begins today, my friends. The path of the fool begins today. Just recognize what that is. We'll do a little uh, tarot uh, here now. I have my computer running down. We'll see if we get to these Goddardisms. We might have to wait till next week. Um, let's go through the, the, the spread I pulled. And this will also be on my Instagram. Um, the High Priestess, the Hierophant, and the Ace of Cups. Okay. So the High Priestess, right? This is, for me, the Divine Feminine. This is both Kali and Isis. This is both the aspects of the Divine Feminine that destroy in order to clear more than, I would say clear out more than actually like, I'm going to fuck your shit up, although it certainly can be expressed as that. And Isis, the gatherer, the putter together of all the component parts that have been destroyed to smithereens and putting them them together in a configuration that's more harmonious, loving, Venusian, we could say. This is the divine feminine. This is what we are in. We are in her loving arms. We are in the arms of the mother right now. Um, it's just what's going on. Recognize that, and it's really nice. <laughs> Fight it, and <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Uh, that's collectively where we're going. The Hierophant, this is the fifth card, right? We got the two and the five, and then we got an eight, a one with the Ace of Cups. But the Hierophant is traditional order, okay? Traditional order is being upset in the sense of relative linear time. But in terms of cosmic hierarchy, in terms of cosmic order, this is flowing into our dimension here, and it's a beautiful thing. But a five is also an unstable, non um It doesn't maintain over time. So it has to flip to something, right? And in this case, it feels like it's flipping to six, right? 6D. Um, This is opposed, like we went from the four is the emperor, then we get to the five, the hierophant. So this feels like it's flipping to the six. What's the six card in the tarot? What's the six card? Do we know? 
I'm going to look this up right now so I don't fuck it up, right? What is the six card, six major arcana? I know a lot of you are probably screaming it right now to me like, you doofus, it's this. It's this. The lover's card. Oh my God, of course it is. How could I ever forget? So we're flipping to the six. We're on the hierophant. This, like, I'm so happy it's the lover's card. Oh my God. Uh, we're flipping from the five to the six. We're going from traditional order, cosmic, regular, to the six, the lovers. This is this cosmic love that is flowing down, ushered in by Isis with that two, that priestess. It's coming. It's happening. It's here. And it's amazing. Just get ready for cosmic love. Just buckle up for it. If you're not used to it, it's going to be pretty fucking intense. Ace of Cups. Oh my God, this reading is so good. I'm so happy I pulled these cards and waited two days to actually talk about them. Um, Ace of Cups. This is represented by a dove plunging from the heavens into a cup with a W on it, an M if you flip it upside down. And the five streams of water flow from the cup into a uh, ocean or lake below and up below it are sprouting lotus flowers so this is symbolic of the cosmic wisdom and love descending from the heavens into our consciousness fueling and feeding our five senses the five streams of water with this cosmic love into the waters below of our unconscious and what flowers up these symbols of wisdom the lotus flowers so that's in our future so let's be clear about what's going on the energy we're dealing with is isis mother energy what we're actually working through is an overturning of this regular cultural societal order into cosmic love but also the cosmic hierarchy of energies is also turning to the lovers this cosmic love this is amazing and we are going to experience this in the future that does not imply distance or duration it just means some energy that we can individually and collectively express our or encounter is ace of cups this is happening it's plunging into our world the merging is happening the great awakening the shift the great remembering it's fucking here guys this is reality 201 we've made it congratulations you're gonna make it okay also tune yourself up fucking recognize this virus is you know it has a function it is not meant to fucking destroy our lives this is it welcome you've graduated from the first class you're here we're in reality 201 i fucking love it guys just buckle up for real just the voices that are emerging the people who you are surrounding yourself with the people you are tuning into turning on uh just just it's amazing beautiful i promise you i know it sounds crazy you're gonna you feel you're gonna feel so good like you already do just tap into it um that's it should we do a recap of one of the techniques let's do that group imagining just imagine you and people you love, which ideally should be everyone, but just start with yourself, looking back at the end of this, which is much closer than any of us can believe, and going, wow, that was, what a crazy turning point for my life and the lives of people around me. What a path we've set ourselves on in terms of prioritizing what's important. Feel the feeling. I'm there. You can latch onto my feeling if I want. It's amazing. It's beautiful. My life clicked into who I'm supposed to be at the perfect time. Every day is a beautiful, amazing day. Not because I'm like, oh, it's amazing. It just like it just keeps working out like that because I clicked into it and you will too. There is nothing that I do and I mean this, energetically or feeling-wise, that you can't do yourself whenever you choose to do it. Understand that, and that's the fucking episode. We'll do the Goddardisms uh, next week. There's enough of them. Uh, no Neville Goddard in this episode. Okay, that's it. Well, there's always Neville Goddard, but no explicit Neville Goddard. That's it. I love you so much. Just, just buckle up. It's going to be fun. I know this shit's gnarly out there. Just buckle up. It's going to be fun. Love you. Until next week, happy imagining.